Hello and welcome. Thank you so much for tuning in online. A big hello to our Gympie, Maryborough and Brisbane locations. And wherever you are from around the world watching us today, we just want to say a big welcome to you. Maybe it's your first time checking church online. You're not a regular church attender. We just want to say a big welcome to you. And I hope that this week really blesses you. And no matter where you are watching from, I pray that this blesses you too. Uh, this morning, we're going to read from a favourite psalm of mine. It's called Psalm 23. Um, and I just felt as I was preparing the service today, I really felt to minister to people, that people needed ministering and people needed reminding that who is their shepherd? Who is the one that's really looking after them, leading them and guiding them? And so we're going to read from Psalm 23 this morning. Let's all read this together. It says, it begins uh, in the psalm like this. It says, The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. One thing I love about this psalm and, and which I really wanted to emphasise with you this morning is that David, when he wrote this psalm, he said that the Lord is my shepherd. And I want to remind you that the Lord is your shepherd this morning. A lot of us go, oh, well, I know that God is, he's our shepherd. And, and we often think as a big blanket statement that he's the shepherd for all people, which yes, that is correct. However, he is your shepherd. He's the one that cares for you. He's the one that looks after you in every area. He's the one who provides for you. He's also the one that protects you. Now, let's have a look in the Hebrew for the word shepherd. You're going to find some incredible uh, nuggets of gold and truths in the Word of God, literally through the Hebrew language. You'll see this. Now, I'll start this slowly um, for those who have never understood Hebrew. Hebrew actually reads from right to left. And you'll actually find the, there is three Hebrew letters to make up the word for shepherd. You'll see resh, the next letter, the middle letter is sadi, and then the last letter is hay. And one thing that makes Hebrew such a unique language is every single Hebrew letter actually has a numerical value, but it also has a picture. Now, you'll find that the first letter here, the Hebrew letter Resh, Resh is actually a picture of a man's head, but it's actually a head that is bowed. That's the picture that uh, it represents the letter Resh. We'll find that Jesus, he is the head. When he is the head of your life, your life will be led down green pastures. He will be the one that leads you by the still waters, by peaceful waters or quiet waters. When Christ is the head of your marriage, your relationship will be stronger. When he is the head of your life, he will be the glue that brings your family together. When Jesus is the centre of your business, your business will prosper because Jesus is the head of that. You'll see the first letter is Resh, the head. Now, the middle letter is Sadi. This is actually represents a servant. Here we have the head, who is known as a bowed head, a one who is serving. But also the middle letter is a picture of a servant. But it's a picture of a servant carrying a burden. And isn't it interesting, in Isaiah chapter 53, it says that, he, representing Jesus, he bore our griefs and he carried our sorrows. You know what? I want to remind you this morning that no matter what you are going through, maybe there's fear, anxiety, worry, 
that you have a servant who is carrying all your worries. He's carrying all your griefs and all your sorrows. The Bible says to cast all our cares upon him for he cares for you. Why? Your king has humbled himself and is carrying all your burdens. Isn't that a beautiful thought? But let's take it a step further. These words for carried our griefs and our sorrows actually represent the words pain and sicknesses. Did you know not only is Jesus carrying all your worries, however, he can carry your pain, he can carry all of your sickness and all of your disease. One thing I love about this is that our Saviour, Jesus Christ, carries all your sicknesses, carries all your diseases. He carries all your fears, all your worries and all your hurts. He is, as the middle letter represents, he is the righteous one carrying a burden. In fact, it was he who knew no sin. He became sin so that we might become the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. And isn't it interesting how the very next verse in this psalm says, He leads me down paths of righteousness. Not only is He the good shepherd that leads us down the paths of righteousness, He is the way, but He is the path of righteousness. Our Saviour Jesus Christ is the way, the truth and the life. No man can come to God except through Jesus. And Jesus is the good shepherd that leads you down the paths of righteousness, but he also is the path of righteousness. Let's continue back onto this Hebrew word for shepherd. You'll see the first letter on the right-hand side is the letter resh, which pictures of a, a head who is humbled and bowed, a bowed head. Here we have the middle letter, sari, the righteous one, which is a picture of a servant carrying burdens. And then the last letter is the letter Hay, which many of us know represents, because of the numerical value, represents grace or the Spirit of God. It speaks of the Holy Spirit. And this is a beautiful picture because it shows how Jesus leads you. He gives us the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit leads us by that still small voice. He leads us through His Word, but He also leads us with peace and joy. Maybe you've got some decisions that you've got to make. What do I do with my business? Let the Holy Spirit who lives inside of you, let Him lead you in peace. If you have a peace, it's generally the Holy Spirit speaking to you. It's a peace and a joy, though, that must go together. Maybe it's a decision, what should I do? Should I remain, keep my business open? If you have a peace and a joy, then the Holy Spirit is saying, yes, do that. Maybe you have a, a little bit of a restlessness inside. Well, that's the Holy Spirit saying, stop. And we must listen to that still, small voice. Why? He's your shepherd. He's the shepherd that will lead and guide you. Why? He cares for you. He is the good shepherd that gives his life for his sheep. Let's continue on. In verse 2, it says this. Here's what Jesus will do. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He brings us and leads us into new places. But he also leads me beside still waters or translated quiet waters. He leads us with his peace. You know what, the more I feed upon the Word of God, the more I see and sense that God is my shepherd, that He is leading me, that I have a consciousness that I am being led by Jesus. And the more I have that, the more that peace comes. It's a peace, Jesus says, not like the world gives. Jesus says, my peace that I give you, it's not like the world gives do I give. Let your heart not be troubled, nor let it be afraid. This peace in Philippians chapter 4, which passes all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Now, it may not make sense, the peace that you have. 
But you know what? The more you press into the fact that he is your personal shepherd, you'll find that there is a supernatural peace. It might not make any sense uh, from the world's point of view, but as you walk, as you go through your day-to-day life, there will be a supernatural peace that passes all understanding. It won't make sense, but that's the supernatural peace that your shepherd brings to you. He is the good shepherd. The Lord is my shepherd. And because he is your shepherd, you shall not want. He will provide for your every need. Uh, Some translations say, the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not lack. You will not be without. You will not be disappointed. You will not be put put to shame because you have the shepherd guiding you into green pastures and he's leading you into peace or quiet waters. Let's continue reading this uh, today. Verse 3, one thing he does, he restores my soul. And I love this word for soul is in the Hebrew, nefesh, which literally means he breathes inside of you a brand new spirit. And in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17, it says, therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. Old things have gone away. Behold, all things have been made new. And maybe you're listening for the first time. You're not a regular church goer. And you would like a fresh start in your life. Maybe you've done some wrong. Maybe you've done things that you couldn't think could be forgivable. Let me tell you, your shepherd will forgive your sins. Simply by putting your faith and trust in Jesus, by repenting of your sins and turning to him, he will breathe inside of you a brand new spirit. He is the one that can restore all that was lost. I totally believe that no matter what has happened, no matter how bad your past has been, that God can restore your life. He can bring your life to a brand new start. Simply turn to him as your shepherd and watch as he can restore your soul. Now, I love this next point. This is verse 4. It says, Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. But I want you to bring this to your attention. This is really interesting. That your shepherd leads you. He's the one that leads you into green pastures. He's the one that leads you by quiet waters. He leads you through right choices in your life. And yet it says in verse 4, Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. Isn't it interesting? Frank Sinatra, he sung the song, I'll do it my way. But you know what? It's our way that leads us into destruction. The Bible says in Isaiah 53, we're all like sheep that's gone astray, each of us to our own way. And I look at my life. I look at the times when I've done it my way. It's only led to destruction. But here's the wonderful thing. You have a shepherd who knows the way out. And let's have a look at verse 4 together. It says this, Yea, though I walk through the valley. Now, here's this. The word valley literally is translated for the word arrogance and pride. And the word here for shadow of death is actually translated death shadow or the word calamity. Yea, though I go this direction in my pride, although in my arrogance I do it my way, that just leads me into calamity. That leads me into destruction. But I want to encourage you, no matter how far away from God you have been, you have a shepherd who knows the way out. His word says that he'll never leave you, that he will never forsake you. And it says this, Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil because you are with me. Isn't that a wonderful truth? God is with you. God knows the way out, no matter how dark it may look. Goes on to say, your rod and your staff, they comfort me. This rod is a rod that defends and protects you. It also, the staff, has a big hook 
which is to reach in and tuck under the sheep and to pull them out of a sticky situation. Isn't it wonderful that you have a shepherd that can pull you out of any circumstance that you might have put yourself in? Maybe through your decisions, doing it your way, you've found yourself into a situation that you can't get out of. Call upon the good shepherd who can pull you out of any trouble that you may be in. Why? He's the one that knows the way out. Yea, though I walk through, because of my arrogance, and though I walk through the calamity of life, I can fear no evil because I've got a good shepherd who knows the way out. He is with me and he protects me and he protects you this morning. I want to encourage you that no matter what, where you are in life, you have a shepherd who protects you and looks after you and can get you out of any situation. He can completely restore your life. He can restore your finances. He can restore your family, restore your marriage, whatever it may be. He is the good shepherd that can lead you in, down the right paths. Goes on to say in verse 5, this is something that I think is really cool. Verse 5, it says that you prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. This word prepare literally means to arrange or to set up. Did you know that no matter what you may be going through in this season, God is using this to arrange and to set you up to be at the right place at the right time. Maybe your business is struggling. I know that the good shepherd can use all things to work together for good. And that this shepherd can set you up, can prepare a table before you. That is speaking of provisions. And no matter what situation that we've found ourselves in, that our good shepherd is setting up, is arranging the right person at the right time. He is arranging provisions for you. It says that the word table actually speaks of provisions in every area. And it also speaks of the word enemies, uh, gives us the word in the Hebrew for stress, oppression, affliction. God uses in the presence of affliction, in the presence of stress, God uses this to set us up, to prepare us, to launch us into the next season. You know, I believe that without Goliath, David would have never have stepped into his potential. Many of us know the story of David and Goliath. And if it wasn't for Goliath, David would have never have stepped into his future. And God can use a Goliath just like this COVID-19. It might seem huge in your life, but God can use this to set you up for future good. He can make a way, your good shepherd can make a way where it seems to be no way. He has provisions for you. He can set you up, can arrange things in order to launch you into your destiny, to launch you into your future. And that's why it says here, you anoint my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Did you know anointing in the Old Testament especially was poured over people to be kings or priests? It was to set people up into their God-ordained ministry or anointed to be set apart for the work of the Lord. Did you know it excites me to think that you have been handpicked by God to live at this time, to be here at this time as a vessel and to be used by God. You are set apart for the work of the Lord. And you know what? God can use your mistakes. God can use your failures. God can use your entire past to be used for His purposes, to be used for His calling. And even though it might seem hard, even though it might seem bleak, a Goliath is facing you. God can use that Goliath to launch you into your next destination. And here it says, my cup runneth over. It brings me to the scripture in Romans chapter 15, verse 13. It says, now may the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in what? Believing. 
that you may abound. Here's the cup that's running over. That you may abound in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. The word hope is a confident expectation of good in your life. Despite the Goliath that you're facing, I believe that God is using this to launch churches all around the world. I believe He is using this to launch you in your next destination. I believe that God will work all things together for good. Let the hope of God overflow and abound as you minister to people. Be encouraged and be in hope. Be in joy as God is using this to set you up to arrange things in order. I totally believe it. And to finish, in verse 6, it says, Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me, shall follow you all the days of your life. And this word, follow, oh, it's such a rich word. It literally means hunt you down, chase after you. What's it saying? Surely goodness and mercy is going to hunt you down. Isn't this a wonderful picture of a good God, a God who's for you? You have a shepherd who's leading you, but you also have a shepherd who is following you, hunting you down with blessings. The Bible says in John chapter 1, for grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. His grace is hunting you down. His favour is hunting you down. I love this. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow you all the days of your life. All of the days of your life. That means in this season right now, His goodness and His mercy is following you all the days of your life that you may dwell in the house of the Lord. Be with God. He is with you forever and ever. Amen. Now, right now is your home. If you can get your communion ready, because we're going to finish this service by remembering what Jesus did on the cross for you, by remembering that He is the Good Shepherd that bore all of your sin. He bore all of your pains, your sorrows, your worries and grief. He took it all upon Him on the cross. And he who knew no sin, he became sin so that you might become the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. That you may have right standing all because of one obedient man, Jesus Christ at the cross. So that you can walk in this favor, you can walk all in this blessing because of one man that did it for you. Now right now, as we take our communion elements... We remember His body broken for you. Right now as we lift the bread up high, He's the one that carried our pains. He carried our sickness. Whatever part in your body that you're uh, feeling sick, maybe it's, uh, you're going through a virus, maybe there's a skin condition, a back problem, whatever it is internally, Jesus bore it all on the cross. And right now, as we just pause and, and partake of the bread of life, Jesus Christ, His body, we remember all that He did for us. So right now, as we bow our heads and close our eyes, I want you to remember His body took all that pain, took all that kidney condition, that liver condition, maybe a heart or lung problem. He took it all on the cross. Back ache, shoulder pain, headaches, he took it all on his body. And Jesus said, I am the bread of life. He who eats of me shall live because of me. Right now, let's lift up the bread and let's partake of the body of the Lord. Now let's lift up the cup. His blood was shed for the forgiveness of your sins. Maybe you're here and you've never accepted Christ into your life. Let me tell you the ABCs of salvation. It's to accept that you're a sinner. It's to admit, 
I've sinned, I've fallen short. The Bible says, for we've all sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. B is for believe. It's to believe that his blood was shed for you, that he died for you, was buried and rose again for you. And C is to confess that he is Lord. The Bible says, with the heart one believes and with the mouth Confession is made unto salvation. We remember his blood was shed for the forgiveness of your sins. He has redeemed you. Means he, with the price of his blood, he bought you from a place of sin and now he puts you into a position of righteousness through his sacrifice on the cross. Right now, let us partake of the cup in remembrance that all the blessings that hunt you down is because of one man's obedience at the cross. Let's partake. Now, if you're at home watching this, can I ask that you stand right now? I really felt that God wanted to minister to some people. And I just really feel to pray for some people. So right now, if you're watching, simply open your hands. Open your hands like you're receiving a gift. And I'm going to pray a benediction, pray a blessing over you as you go about through this week. Let's close our eyes. Let's open our hands and receive a blessing from the Lord, just like you're receiving a gift. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord keep you. And may the Lord cause his face to shine upon you. May the Lord be gracious and lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Heavenly Father, I thank you that you are our shepherd. Lord, you look after each and every person individually. Lord, that, may they be reminded that you care, that you lead them continually, that you are there no matter, even in the hard times or in the quiet times. And God, I thank you that right now you are leading people into new areas of life. You're leading them one day at a time, one mouthful at a time. Lord, that they should never worry about the future. Lord, because you shall provide for them. God, I pray that the peace of God, Lord, which transcends all understanding, Father, let it guard their heart. Lord, I pray that the peace of God protects them that they should never fear because we have a good shepherd who gives his life for you. Father, I thank you, Lord, that restoration right now is taking place in families, marriages, in homes. Lord, you restore lost finances. God, I thank you that you are a God of restoration. And right now, I just pray as every person is watching, no matter what device they're watching on, Lord, I believe that your spirit right now is traveling to each and every person under the sound of my voice. And I pray your restoration power rest upon them. Lord, no matter what sticky situation some of us have been in, maybe we've found ourselves in a place that we can't get out of. Lord, I thank you that you know the way, that you are with us. And Lord, because you know the way, you can make a way that seems impossible. God, come to pass. And I thank you that, Lord, you are the one that helps us in every situation of our lives. Holy Spirit, I pray, Lord, that through this difficulties, God, you are arranging, you are setting us up Lord, you are putting things in order, supernatural provisions around our lives. Lord, I lift up every pensioner, every elderly person that is listening. And I thank you, Holy Spirit. Right now, you are resting upon their hearts, letting them know that God will provide your every single need. Lord, I thank you, your anointing be upon people. I thank you that, Lord, joy and hope floods, overflows into their life. And Lord, that they stand on your blessings and your promises of goodness and mercy that will follow them all the days of their life. Father, forever 
and ever. Amen. May the Lord bless you this morning. Well, I hope you enjoyed just that short snippet of Psalm 23. We're going to do some more uh, uh, in-depth on this at victorychurch.com.au. You can check us out at our podcast section. Thank you so much for tuning in. I hope you are blessed this morning. And I know that you have a good shepherd who is for you, not against you, that can lead and guide you. God bless.